My heart sank with fear. The hairs in the back of my neck stood on end. And I started to draw some long, deep breaths to try and calm myself. I grabbed onto James's wrist, and he turned to me slowly and calmly said, don't worry, baby girl. It's just a little turbulence. It'll be over shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters and most welcome guests, allow me to be your pilot. Captain Lynn, on board this Toastmasters flight, I want to take you on a journey, a descriptive adventure, a trip down memory lane. Just as I described in my opening lines, the flight from Glasgow to LA was a little bumpy, but just like life itself, any flight path can have its ups and downs. When we eventually did touch down in LA 14 hours later, a little bleary eyed and hungry, we walked out of the airport and I remember the warm California breeze welcoming us, wrapping around our bodies like a warm, cozy blanket. I had goosebumps from head to toe and thought, wow, I really am California dreaming. The following day, we went to pick up Sally, Mustang Sally. She was a dark horse, a black beauty. She had some raw power. She had these belching fumes, raw, rich diesel, to remind you of this power every time you accelerated. She helped us attack the busy, bustling roads of Los Angeles and act, let us allow, allowed us to act whimsical between city to city. We moved from Beverly Hills down to Long Beach and up the coast to Santa Monica. And this is where I have my most vivid memory. The jet lag was still haunting us. It was 5.30 in the morning and we decided to go for a run along the beachfront. We kicked off our shoes and I went down to the water, just where the ocean met the sand. The waves were lapping up gently to say good morning, and I started running. James was on the dry sand where it was like running through treacle, so much harder. We made it about two and a <coughs> half miles down the beachfront, and then James got hungry. So we decided to turn back, not before realising that there was beach huts just perfectly positioned along the front. Just great for sprint intervals, says James. So I started to gather up pace and more pace and started running faster and harder. I elongated my torso, inhaled as much energy and oxygen as I could muster and sprinted faster faster than my legs could keep moving and felt so free. There was no treadmill around me to keep me at limits. There was no negative voices to slow me down. Just the freedom of me, myself and California dreaming. The next day we dragged ourselves away from Santa Monica after an extended trip there and made our way up to San Francisco but not before driving the Pacific Coast Highway. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Pacific Coast Highway is a road so perfectly and delicately engineered into the side of a cliff face. The cliff and the road are just inches of life apart at times. We felt guilty for driving past such scenic and artistic beauty that we had to stop. And I remember this one point, we were parked up on the cliff top and I was standing, gazing out to the horizon. There was oranges and greens, blues, purples, all dancing to make this stunning horizon in front of us. James put his arms around me, snuggled his head into my shoulder and just whispered, I love you. Again, I had goosebumps from head to toe, felt so grateful to be alive to be there, to have James, and to be experiencing that at such a young age. We moved on to San Francisco and embraced all of the tourism that San Fran, the great San Fran, has to offer, before conjuring up the energy to make an 11-hour drive down to Las Vegas. 
Now, in order to ease the boredom a little, to keep us focused, we thought, let's download some audiobooks. After listening to the trials and tribulations of the old major, of Napoleon, of Snowball, for those of you who know, that's Manor Farm, that's the classic animal farm. After we'd listened to that, we moved on to Richard Branson's book. And this is when I remember having a sleeping James in the passenger seat, driving down these roads that were laid out in front of me like black licorice, as far as the eye could see, just perfectly melted tarmac in front of me. The desert either side with sparse cacti decorated all over and driving so engrossed, entrenched and hanging on to every word that Richard had to say. He was telling stories about our, his life, his business, and I became truly inspired by what he was saying. At this point in my life, I was making a transition between having just graduated from university and finding a job, a new career, my first job. So I had to make it the right one. And he gave me the understanding and hit home just how important this transition really was. These audiobooks at the time were something just to keep us from being bored, just something to, to keep us focused. And it turned out to be something that's become a daily, an integral part of my routine. Before we headed ho home to Scotland, the land of the great, the land of the redheads, we stopped off in New York to introduce James to the Big Apple. Now, before I land this flight, I'd like to leave you with three messages. Firstly, I was running along the beach and I realised we've got to sprint at life. Take a deep breath, stride out as far as you possibly can. No limits imposed, no negative voices, just sprinting. Secondly, go home and put your arms around someone you love. Tell them you care about them. It's a message that can never be exhausted, and that's the message of love. Thirdly, if you don't already, I would highly recommend you download and listen to some audiobooks. They help you grow, think big, think different. They educate you, and they might just change your life. I'd like to land this plane safely and securely. I'd like to thank you for flying Toastmasters Airways. The local time is around 8.22pm and wishing you a very safe and pleasant onward journey. Thank you.